When you're buying gold and silver, the price that you pay almost doesn't really matter. If you're holding it for 10, 15, 20 plus years, then in my opinion, it will come good in the end. But if you're looking for a short term profit or a quick turnaround, you are putting yourself at risk. And it is important to evaluate these risks when buying your precious metals. Backyard Folian here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for this week's Precious Metal Ramble which is going to be all about why the spot price of silver, gold or platinum or any precious metal for that matter really is immaterial. It doesn't matter. A lot of arguments out there to be had as to why buying silver, gold or platinum at any premium point that you can buy right now, just getting hold of some of this precious metal is a good thing to do and it is something that will protect you and grow grow exponentially, potentially, even in the case of silver. Now, I am very much a fan of buying precious metals. As you can see, I've got a lot of them and I will continue to buy them in the coming years. However, one thing that always fuels my thinking and my purchases is risk management. And I do see a lot of risk at the moment in buying high premium items that are then going to put one's self at leverage. I do not feel that if you buy precious metals, whether it be silver at a high premium right now, that if you hold it for 10, 15, 20 years, you will have any risk. I think this stuff will come good in the end. Now, I do want to put my usual disclaimer in right now to say that that is my opinion. It is not financial advice. I'm not a savant. I do not know where the price of silver will be in any given time. However, I do feel that this stuff will yield value in terms of protecting wealth, growing potentially a little bit as well. It's a very undervalued metal over a long period of time. I also think that this stuff yields an awful lot of risk for people who buy with a short-term goal in mind, three months, five months, a year even. High premiums are what puts you at risk, and silver certainly does have that element to consider right now. So in today's video, I want to examine a lot of those kind of ways of thinking, how it influences my purchase decisions, what my history is around this topic, and some of the pitfalls that even I find myself in right now with regards to some of the precious metals out there. It's a really interesting topic and I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions as we go throughout the video. So please comment down below with those thoughts and remember to hit the thumbs up if you are enjoying this video as we go. Now, spot prices, they're the magical number that's powered by the wizards in Wall Street, whatever you believe. It's a global commodity, it's a volatile global commodity. Silver prices in spot go up, they go down, they go left, they go right. Who knows where they might end up? There's a lot of people who think and have thought over this last coming weeks and last few weeks and months that silver should be over 30 by now, 35, 40, 50 dollars an ounce. And therein lies the problem. Expectations of a particular outcome for silver is a difficult thing to manage. If you are sitting there and you're expecting silver to get to $50 an ounce within a certain time period, and then it does not happen, then if you've over leveraged yourself, if you've borrowed too much, or if you borrowed at all to buy silver, that's something that I am very much not a fan of. But if you've over leveraged yourself and you get unexpected bills, or you lose your job or something horrible happens in one's life, then you could be facing a time where these premiums that you've paid for the silver in your possession, or even platinum, platinum we'll talk about as well today, you could find yourself in trouble. And I've talked at length about why premiums are as high as they are right now. It's of course down to the demand that's out there, the bullion dealers, the refineries, everybody out there is struggling with the supply chains. There is no shortage of silver though. That's one of the misconceptions that I think is out there right now, that there are, you know, there is this sort of absolute shortage of silver on the market. When you hear places like the US Mint saying that there's a shortage of blanks for them, it's not that there is no silver out there. It is just simply that there is a limited supply of blanks. The refineries are selling their own raw material blanks for higher prices than they would to the mints. It's a supply chain issue and it will come good in the end. When the supply increases, I think prices will come down a little bit. So it's really important to recognize this macro trend that we are in right now. Yes, there is financial hardship in the world. Yes, there will be inflation concerns going forward. And I still think that this stuff here, silver, is a good buy for the long term. So if you are buying lots of silver right now, or you're considering buying lots of silver right now, my best 
I don't, I don't really want to use the word advice because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy who talks about shiny things. But my best thoughts on the matter is to protect one's interests by making sure you have safety nets, by making sure that you don't overcommit to any particular asset. And if you are considering large purchases of a particular asset, then very much think about all of the different options which are out there. I've made a video in the past as well talking about how gold and silver we're on the same team you know there's, there's this feeling that gold is not the thing to buy right now it's silver that's the big big potential winner i would argue complete opposite because silver right now the ratio with gold it's been so much higher in the recent past and it's now very much come down it's certainly i think better to buy gold right now that's what i'm focusing on that's what i've been looking at over this last sort of three or four months really i haven't bought any brand new bullion grade silver for a while but gold is what fuels my long-term prospects just simply because the risk is lower and for the short term as well you know you look at this stuff you never know what's going to happen in life yes it's fantastic to have all of these precious metals and to enjoy them and it's a, a you know it is a wonder this one's i'm just going to give this a quick clean this by the way is a complete bullion grade coin so i'm really not concerned about the condition um, but that's part of the that's part of the aspect of it, you know, a bullion grade piece of gold like this with this rather nasty blemish on the queen's for, uh, on the queen's cheek there really doesn't make any difference to me. It's still got an ounce worth of gold in here, bought at a low premium. If I need to liquidate it at a short notice kind of period, if I need to get the money that I've locked in this coin out for an emergency, then I feel like I can, and I also feel like I won't be potentially losing quite as much for this particular coin. Now, uh, I think I've got this written on the back here. Yes, what I paid for it. So this coin was bought from Atkinson's Bullion in the United Kingdom. They're not sponsoring today's video, it just happens to be that's the one I've picked up out of my stash. And you can see the price paid for it. Back in 2018, £992. Now that is fantastic in terms of growth. However, for the long term, this is how I look at it. If I sell this piece of gold right now and earn myself a wonderful, gosh, nearly £300 plus profit, that money is fantastic and it might well spur on my next purchase. But ultimately, I still plan to buy more gold over this coming decade. I think that buying gold for my pension, for my long-term wealth preservation is key. So if I sell any of my gold right now just to cash in on some profits, what am I going to do with that fiat currency, with that cash? It's about how you want to lock it up. And for me, I've got those reserves in the bank account. I've got the safety nets there that we don't necessarily need to sell this stuff to make ends meet, to pay the mortgage, to pay the bills. If we have the car breakdown, to buy a new car or to get it repaired. You know, these things are there as safety nets. And I would be very much like, well, if I'm having to just sell my goal to profit on it, then it's a bit redundant in my opinion. Now, I cannot say the same for silver or for platinum, for these items that have higher premiums. So let's talk a little bit about platinum. Platinum, for me, represents a really good potential winner, and it has for the last couple of years. In fact, you can see this one here bought all the way back in 2017 and at the time that was a decent price over spot price where platinum was and you've only got to look at spot price today of 826 pounds i paid 839 pounds even spot price this has not gone above it yet now the fact that it is a one ounce uh, platinum lion in of itself yields a significant amount of premium on the coin and also with the way that platinum is you get more of a premium on this i would be easily able to sell this for a thousand pounds an ounce and make a hundred and forty pounds profit but again it's about what would happen with the money but if i want to sell this for that thousand pounds an ounce mark i'm probably not going to get that price point from any dealers any quick sales so even now after three years four years even of owning this coin you can see that the risk still is there for me if i need to liquidate this particular item fast i am potentially putting myself at risk of not yielding the best returns for it. And that's something that I think is also true of silver. If you have this silver at the high premium and you are looking to cash it in very quickly, you need to think about those low prices that you're unfortunately going to get. Silver bullion dealers, bullion dealers generally are not charities. They are businesses. They are there to make money. And ultimately, they will try their very best to make as much money as possible. Gold very much is that risk I don't want to say risk-free, but it's that risk-adverse category. Uh, and that's 
can be uh, you know said also in the markets you look at the gold versus silver market silver has always been a lot more volatile in terms of price movements and price points than the gold has and you've only got to look at last year's massive calamitous drop down in silver price relative to gold to see that ultimately if the brown stuff does hit the fan on the markets that this stuff gold this stuff here will be a lot safer a bet than silver and that's definitely the biggest factor for me to have for my purchases going forward it is very much about risk management and I do see a lot and this is kind of my a cautionary tale rant at the moment I do see a lot of people who are getting caught up in purchasing silver and gold buying is an addictive hobby whether people like to admit it or not we are all silver and gold magpies shiny magpies uh, I know it's how I got started I bought a small batch of my first silver coins and almost instantly I was hooked I, I just I mean you've got to look at it now six years later I have a YouTube channel showing off gold and silver on almost a daily basis you know it is very much an addictive thing to buy we know that shopping can be an addiction buying stuff can be very much addictive and people can get in an awful lot of trouble if they don't concentrate on that risk management so for me whilst this stuff is wonderful and I can sit here and I can buy it and I can enjoy the buying process and to a certain extent yeah I'm a I'm, yeah, first step to admitting you have a, is admitting you have a problem I'm backyard bullion and I'm a gold and silver addict I love this stuff I think it's wonderful at the same time though I do have the sensible risk management head on so if I am buying lots and lots of money's worth of precious metals for me, I feel a lot safer, a lot more secure in the gold than I do in the silver. Now, that's not to say that in the long term, I don't think this stuff will very much perform well. I think that if you are buying right now for the right reasons, then this is great. And yes, the premiums are high right now on this stuff. But to be honest, it's relative to what I've been buying my silver at over time. And, you know, the US customer base that's talking about premiums and to, you know some people are moaning about them some people are not for those that are moaning about the premiums on silver right now and thinking that it's a bad deal I sympathize we've been there for example these coins here which will have been bought pre-brexit where we would have been able to import them from the European Union without having the VAT added on there these were still at about a 20% premium over spot price at the time now of course spot price at the time was an awful lot lower so right now these coins, which were bought at about 150 to 170 pounds each, are very much enjoying those growth points. And that's fine, and that's great. But again, it's about the fast sale and whether or not you can get that money out at the other end. Over a long period of time, though, I think we can all agree that this stuff will go up in value. It's not necessarily going to be an overnight huge growth that I think a lot of people are wanting and expecting but a slow, sustainable tick up over time to preserve wealth, to enjoy that insurance that precious metals give is almost a guarantee. Now, again, that's not financial advice. And it, it is important to remember that you'll hear, hear so many different people with so many different agendas talking about silver and gold and how it is a surefire win that things will get to a certain point. But I think that if you are planning to hold this stuff over a 20 or 30 year period, the most important message that I will part with here in today's video is that you will be able to pick and choose the moments that you sell your gold, your silver, your platinum, whatever it might be. You will be able to pick and choose it if you hold it responsibly, if you need to release it for a house purchase for whatever it might be at some point in the future. If you have planned properly, you will be fine regardless of what prices you pay right now. If you don't consider the risk, you are putting yourself at risk. That's the message I want to part with here on today's video. I am very much a fan of metals and we are all here to enjoy and to precious metal invest. If you would like to share your opinion, please do so down in the comment section. It might well very much you know, digress from my own opinion. You might disagree with what I've said today. That's absolutely fine. If you want to have a healthy adult debate about this, then comment down below respectfully. There are so many people who are just so overtly opinionated on 
that silver will go to the moon anytime soon, that basal three will cause gold to go to astronomic highs. I don't think those are likely, but I get that people feel strongly about it. But just comment respectfully and we will engage with you down in the comments. Otherwise, hit the like button if you've enjoyed this presentation and tell YouTube that you've liked it. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, consider subscribing because we make this kind of content on a weekly basis and there's a good chance that you'll enjoy content like this that we make in the future. Otherwise, that is it from me. Have a fantastic week ahead. We'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.